I figured it was fine. Listen, my goal is to make five hundred by Christmas, so I should be good. All right. <clears throat> so let's go and talk about asymptotes, right? Um, first thing that uh, the problem is asking us is they want us to find uh, find our domain and also find our vertical and our horizontal asymptote. So. Uh, first thing, guys, if you remember, when we're talking about domain for a rational function, um, what we need to do is we need to say your domain is going to be all your values except for anything that's going to make your bottom zero, right? Because we cannot divide by zero. So therefore, let's go and figure out what values will give us zero on the bottom. So when I want to find out my, uh, when I want to find the domain, I'm going to find the zeros of my denominator. So I say zero is equal to one plus two x. Right? So therefore, I take a look and I solve for x, subtract 1 on both sides. So therefore, when I plug in the number negative 1 half into x, I get 0 on the bottom. Right? Right? Yes. So when I plug in negative 1 half into the bottom, I get 0. Meaning, we cannot do that. So if I was going to look at my graph, um, I'll just make the graph one out. If I had a graph, and like I said, I have no idea what my graph's gonna look like. However, I do know that at negative one half, my graph is not, you can't have negative one half, right? That cannot be a part of my function. You cannot put in negative one half and get an output because you can't divide by zero. So therefore, what we have is what we call an asymptote. And if I have like, let's say negative one, negative two, so therefore at this point negative one half, I'm gonna draw this vertical line here. I have no idea what my graph's gonna look like, but I know at negative one half that is not a part of my domain. So my domain is gonna be my all real numbers except x cannot equal negative one half. So to graphically represent that, what we do is we have what we call a vertical asymptote. So you have this dotted line. Now the next one is now I need to figure out what my um, horizontal asymptote is. So your vertical asymptote is you pretty much you know set, find the zeros of your bottom uh, find the zeros of your bottom track of your bottom polynomial. To find the horizontal asymptote, I need to take a look at the two degrees of my leading terms uh, or each polynomial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this polynomial as leading coefficient or my leading terms in front of each other. So here what I have is. You know, remember we always have your highest degree, x is then you're going down. Well, these only have x to the first power on each one. So you can say x equal to 1 and x is equal to 1. And we call them a lot of times m and n, right? We just give them kind of our variable names. What they're saying is when your top degree is equal to your bottom degree, you're, you're going to do is you're going to take your coefficients and divide them. So since I have 1 is equal to 1, my degrees are exactly the same. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my top degree, which is negative 5, and divide it by 2. So I'm going to take negative 5 divided by 2, and that's going to give me a negative uh, 2.5, right? So therefore, my next, my horizontal asymptote is going to be down at negative 2.5, and that's going to be a line right there. So, I mean, the graph didn't ask us to, uh, to graph these all, but I just want to kind of give you guys an idea of you know, physically what it's going to look like, what these asymptotes actually uh, look like. And what you can see is the graph is these asymptotes are never going to cross or approach these lines. So to find the vertical asymptote for this problem, what you have to do is just set your uh, bottom polynomial equal to zero, find the value of x, that's your vertical asymptote. And to find the horizontal, there's a couple range of uh, powers we'll actually talk about. But the first one is when you have your degrees, for each uh, polynomial are exactly the same, then you just take the coefficients, divide them, and that's going to be your horizontal asymptote. Right? Woo. 